Hi, thank you for joining me. Today, I'd like to discuss palettes as a tool. And palettes are used for a variety of reasons. Mainly, we use palettes to hold our paints. This is one of the more traditional type palettes. It's kind of large. They also come square, which um, they're made out of some kind of board. I don't know what the name of this board is. It looks like plywood to me. With these, you must treat these uh, first. I usually treat them with some linseed oil, rub it down really good, a couple of coats of linseed oil before applying the paint to it. This, These you can scrape the paint off and use them over and over. They're making them in all types of sizes now, ergonomic sizes that tend to fit more comfortably in your hand and close to your body. This is one similar to that, except it's a uh, plexiglass. And I must tell you, I absolutely hate it. As you can see, I used it once. I don't know whether you're supposed to use it for acrylics or oil paints, but I tried it with both. And you can see there's still paint on it with a ton of scrapes. So I ended up taping something to it. And as you can see, the tape is still there. It's really hard to get the things off of this palette. They also have the, these are the disposable palettes, tons of different brands and they also come in different uh, sizes. It's uh, more like a, um, it's white so you can see the color, your colors really well on it. But the back is a regular piece of paper and the front, the surface has a type of wax on it, so it's similar to a wax paper. Now I have in a bind, especially when you go through a lot of these um, paper palettes, I've used wax paper. This wax paper or parchment paper will do the same thing, it's just not as sturdy. This you can use any type of medium on it, acrylic, watercolor, oil, and casting. The palettes that I tend to go to more are the glass palettes and I showed you in one of my other videos how to make this glass palette really inexpensive way um, the one thing this I find as a drawback to me it's eerie I haven't had the an accident with them yet but they are thin it's just regular glass and so it can break. I prefer tempered glass. Uh, it doesn't break as easy. And with the tempered glass, I will tell you, don't go out to a regular store and look for these. These are, uh, are pieces that came from a microwave, an older type microwave. I just go to the secondhand store. The back is uh, has a texture on it. So I don't know what it's for, rather to keep stuff from laying on the surface of the microwave. I don't know. It doesn't matter. It works really well for our purposes. If you like, you can paint the back of this uh, white. And then this one I like because it's really small. I can carry it. I just throw it in a bag with uh, my paints. And I just have a little small palette where I can lay out the colors if I need them. But this has an edge on it, a rim here. And I don't worry about the paints running over the edge with this piece. It's much smaller, but it tends to do the job. I have a lot of different uh, sizes of these. Uh, this is another one. And one side is tempered. I mean, the glass is tempered. One side is textured, excuse me. And this side is smooth. Uh, as you can see, this one I use, I use this for, for gessoing paper. I just put the paper on and I gesso the paper. So that's what this is, but it lays flat. It's a much thicker glass than the glass that you get out of picture frames. Also, here's another one. And of course, this came out of a microwave also. This side is textured and this side is smooth. The one thing that I like about this one, and I tend to use this a lot, um, I'll use this when I paint, but I also use this when I make prints, 
is because if you can see this, these corners, it has this plastic on each of the corners and I've never tried to take it off till now. It seems like it will come off, but I don't need it to. And it has that on all four corners, so it keeps it elevated off of the surface. I use these a lot when I do uh, prints, when I'm making litho prints. And that works really nicely. And I'll show you the great part about these pieces of tempered glass that come from microwaves. They're reusable and all you need is a nice little blade and run it across it. Excuse me for the noise. And that's how you clean it up. And you can get it a little cleaner than that, but I'm not going to sit here and clean it while you're here. Just get one of these nice little blades and clean away that dried paint off of there. Now you can also get these, um, and you've seen in some of my other videos, the tray is white. It looks like a tray, and I'll show it to you. This also came from a microwave. It says for microwave or convection oven. That's what it says on the back. And I use these, I enjoy using these when I do the pour paints because it has a big rim on it. I don't have to worry about anything wasting out of these. And this is cleaned the same way as the other one. You see how easy that comes off of there? And I tend to reuse these pieces of, of um, paint. That's why I leave them on here so that they can get thick. Right now this is kind of thin and I can't use it for much. So that's why I don't clean my palettes off right away. I just go to another one or I'll just reuse these. But as you can see, some have lips on them and it keeps the paint on there. Either way it goes, these are reusable and quite nice. So try them out. It will save a lot of money on paper palettes. So thank you for joining me. Until next time.